Now let's look at our first assignment this week, our first writing assignment, and it's going to be on page 151. You were here last week, um, but we didn't write the story. Uh, we're going to do number one um, in section one, condensing lengthy leads. And again, we're going to follow my directions and not the author's directions. We're going to follow our lead count, and we're actually going to write the entire story. Every time we do a story, we're going to write it all, not just the lead. So we're going to look at story number one right here. And this is a story about a family who returned from a shopping trip to find their house on fire. You want to ask yourself what happened, right? And so read the facts and do a little brainstorming with yourself. I'm going to do that with you so that you know what it should sound like. But eventually you should be able to have this conversation with yourself whenever you sit down to write a story. So um, we have this family, we have Christina and Dennis, and they're three children, and they live at 532 Third Street. And they were shopping Saturday night, and they came home and their house was on fire, right? They're two-story frame house. There's some detail in this story that you don't want to leave out. This tells us a little bit about what this house looked like, what is made out of, uh, and that it was not a small house, sounds like, right? We don't want to use those. We only want to use the scriptures that we have. But that gives us an idea of the scope of the fire. And that firefighters responded within five minutes, but they were not able to save the house. Everything was destroyed. Okay, so now this is not going to follow AP style, so you want to make sure that you correct any problems that you see in here. The first question is what happened? So another detail that I think is a human detail that I would definitely keep in the lead is that they were shopping. That seems like a small thing, but honestly, it's what makes them people. And we can identify with the experiences of other people. We might not have had this particular experience, but we've all been out enjoying ourselves and something happens to totally switch gears. Um, we experience a tragedy, we watch someone else experience something really difficult, and we never expected it, right? And so all of that makes a story human, and you always want to do that when you write. If there's something in there like that, you want to include that. Now, you need to ask yourself also, do we delay ID or immediately ID these people? Well, the answer is we're going to delay ID them because they're residents of the town, we'll call this town Dillville, and they, um, we don't know, the public's not going to know them. Doesn't mean they're not important, they have value in God's sight, it's not anything like that. It's just that we don't know their names, we're not going to recognize their names. And so we're going to delay ID them, so we have to decide what we're going to call them. Here's what we can't do. We can't say the Shattuck family, because what if there are 50 Shattuck families in town. So that's not going to work. Instead, we're going to give them the name of the hometown. So the Dillville, a Dillville family returned from a shopping trip. Um, a Dillville couple and their three young children. Um, a Dillville family of five. You have some options to describe them in your lead. Uh, and so you can do that there. That's the most common way to identify people in a delayed ID lead. Now you also can ask yourself, who are the who's in my story? Who do I start with? So our most obvious who, of course, is this family. Uh, now once I've said and identified everybody later in the story, I can say the Shattuck family because everybody knows what I'm talking about. So I wanted to add that too but I can't start the lead with that, it's never gonna work. So they can be a who. Uh, the fire can be a who. It's not a person, but it actually caused the problem. Uh, fire destroyed the two-story frame house, uh, and you can go on and tell the story, or you can start with firefighters, right? Firefighters weren't able to save the house. Think about your who, think about how you wanna start, because, but you want it, we, we, we need to know what happened. We need to know that they were out shopping, the house caught fire, and firefighters couldn't save it. You want to kind of know the ultimate outcome if you can in the story. So how you start, who you pick for the who is going to help you to do that. 
Now your second paragraph is going to have your, your people and it's going to have their basic ID information. And I want us to follow exactly what the book has right here. See how this looks? It's exactly what you should do. Christina Shattuck, comma, 43, comma, and Dennis Shattuck, comma, 45, comma, and their three children, comma, ages seven, comma, three, and nine months, comma. Now, that's a lot of commas when I say it, but it's exactly as it should be. So let's follow this. Let's use their ages. It's going to help you to learn how to set this up because it's a little bit different from what you are used to hearing in broadcast journalism, but it's what we should do in writing this way. So that's how we're going to identify them. Another point, too, is a story of this size really does need. I'm going to do this little part over because I cannot turn this message thing off of my computer. So I hope it doesn't happen again. Now, a story this size, you want to think about uh, the length of your lead. It actually should be longer than your um, second paragraph. You need to be top heavy in the story. You need to include as much as you can in the lead. You're not going to have a whole lot left to say in the second paragraph. You don't have to save anything important. Uh, just write, write their names, write whatever other piece of info that you need to to have a complete sentence. But really and truly, a story like this is going to be, ugh, I'm going to do it again. I turned it off. I don't know why it keeps doing this. Now, a story this size is going to be top heavy. So really, you want to pile it all in in the lead. You're not going to have much left in the second paragraph. You need to give their names and that information and anything you need to write a complete sentence, basically. But you want to put as much as you can, pack as much as you can in the lead so that the most of the story is going to be at the top. This story is so short, it shouldn't be the other way around. If your second paragraph is longer than your lead, you did something wrong. So go ahead and give it a go. I think you'll do a great job. Follow the guidelines we've talked about so far, and I'm looking forward to reading your story.